Hello and welcome for your first course on human biology. I'm Dr. Adnan Halabi, and I'm gonna be the professor who's gonna give you this course. This course is gonna be substituted in 24 courses in 12 sessions. Each session will be for two hours. This is what, uh, what we planned for when we're giving the courses in place at the university. Now at the distance, it's gonna be a courses, a small courses, uh, for like 30 minutes, it's going to be more than 12 sessions. Not the double, but uh, for sure more. In this course, we're going we to explain three parts. First, we're going to start with an introduction to cytology. In this part, we are going to try to understand the different components of the cell and what each component the organoids uh, has as a main function and the secondary functions. In the second part, we're gonna discuss the histology part, so the science of the tissue. And in the third and the last part, we're gonna talk about the cytogenetics. So as you saw, it's a cytogenetics. So we are gonna talk only about the genetics inside the cell. We are gonna not talk about uh, the generations uh, or the public uh, genetics or the different part of the genetics. It's a very big, huge word. In this, part, in this part, we are gonna only talk about uh, DNA, structure of DNA, the translation, the collection, etc. What's happened inside the cell? What, once it's outside the cell, this is where our course ends. Starting always as with some definitions in order to understand uh, different domination that we are gonna use in this course, starting with the cytology. So, logi, it always means the science of. So, cyto is the cell. So, it's a medical and scientific study of the cell. Histology, so always logi is the science. Histo, it means tissue. So, it's the science and the biology of studying the tissue. Cytogenetics, as we saw, as we said, it describes the storage and genetic information within cells and how this information is passed on the next generation. So <clears throat> I repeat here, do not misunderstand me, we are going to just talk about the genetics that happen inside the cell, how it passed on the next generation is going to be the subject of another course maybe. From the cell to organism, what we have? We have as the smallest part the structural part, the smallest structural part is the cell, is the basic unit of the life. When we gather different cells who share the same function, we had a tissue. A tissue is defined as a group of cells working to together and they have the same function. Never forget that they must have the same function. Then if we gather tissue together, we got an organ. It's a group of tissues working together. Then we have the organ system, which is a group of organs working together. And last, when we assemble this different organ system, we got an organism, which is a living thing made of one or more cell. An organism, it could be made for one cell, which is called the unicellular organism, or it could be like us, like a human, made of many, many cells. Number of cells, as we have said, we have the unicellular organism. Those are organisms composed of one cell, like bacteria, for example. And we have the multicellular. And those are organisms composed of many cells that may organize into tissue and etc. as we said in the last diaporama. We have two basic type of cell. We have the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cells. As you can distinguish from the two image or the two figures uh, in front of you, you can distinguish that the eukaryotic, the animal cell, it's way bigger, it's way complicated than a prokaryotic cell. Good. In details of these two type of cells, we have, as we, as we said, the prokaryotic cells, which found usually in bacteria, but not only in bacteria, 
we have the eukaryotic cell found in the human animals, but not only in the human and animals, we can found in fungi and in plants and in protists. These two types of cells share some same characteristics. What they have and in the same characteristics. They perform the same basic function. So they have the DNA, they make protein, they function, they are cells. So both performing the same basic function. Both are, are surrounded by plasma membrane to control what enter and to leave the cell. So in both we have a plasmic membrane. Both are filled with cytoplasm. Certain ribosome to make protein. They are both have ribosome, which is crucial to make protein, as you all know. Certain, uh, sorry, they both contain DNA to give the general instruction for the cell life. So DNA is something in common in all cells. So in all organisms, in all living things on Earth, they all have DNA. So it's good. That's what they have in common. So what they have in differences. First of all, the eukaryotic cell is, more, is much larger. It's a bigger cell. It's a much more complex type of cell, always in comparison with the prokaryotic cell. It contains a true nucleus to house the genetic material of DNA. So both they have a kind of nucleus, maybe, but what we call the true nucleus, that's something with an envelope, something with a membrane. So it's a compartment that's well isolated from the cytoplasm. That's what we found in eukaryotic cell. In prokaryotic cell, we have the DNA inside the cytoplasm that has a like, something like compartment, but it's not uh, a true nucleus, something in nucleus-like. The eukaryotic cells has a linear DNA into chromatin found inside the nucleus. So the DNA is packaged in the chromatin form. But in prokaryotic cell, the DNA does not have the structure. So the both have the DNA, but the structure of the superior structure of DNA as a chromatin in eukaryotic cells that we found in eukaryotic cell. But in uh, prokaryotic cell, as we gonna uh, see in the next day program, uh, they have a DNA, but it doesn't have the superior structure of chromatin. The eukaryotic cell contains specialized structure in the cytoplasm called the organelles and to carry out various function. So the organelles are something very important, are something that we are going to explain in details during this course. We have different type of organelles. Each one, we're going to have a chapter inside our course, which are going to what we, where we are going to discuss in details. So the organelles are like a soldier, like it's particles inside the cell, which each one of them has a very specific function. And without it, the cell cannot uh, maintain its uh, functions. They not all have a cell wall. So they may have a cell wall, the eukaryotic cell may have a cell wall like uh, the plant, for example, the cell inside the plant, they have a cell wall, but not all eukaryotic cells have a cell wall. So what we can uh, say here uh, for the prokaryotic cell. So automatically when you say the eukaryotic cell is much larger, which is means the prokaryotic, it's smaller. When we say the eukaryotic cell has, it's much more complex. So the prokaryotic cell is simpler. It contains a true nucleus. So automatically the prokaryotic cell does not have a true nucleus. It has the eukaryotic linear DNA packaged into chromatin. So automatically the prokaryotic has a linear DNA, but it's not packaged into chromatin. The eukaryotic has a specialized structure, which calls the organelles. So automatically the, the prokaryotic cell, sorry, does not have these organelles. When we say the eukaryotic cell, not all have a cell wall. So 
does it mean that the prokaryotic cell all have a cell wall? So here again, another uh, figures that compare animal and the plant cell. So what we can dis distinguish directly is difference is the cell wall. So the cell wall here is present in one of two eukaryotic cell. So that's why we said that not all the eukaryotic cell have a cell wall, but it doesn't mean they doesn't have a cell wall. So the prokaryotic, as we have said, is a much smaller, less complex, doesn't have a true nucleus, it has a silkier DNA that is found in the cytoplasm, not inside the nucleus. It doesn't have a structure of a chromatin. It doesn't have organelles. And it's always surrounded by a cell wall. So here a figure for a prokaryotic cell. What we can see here clearly is the cell wall. In parallel with the cell membrane, we can found the DNA all over the place, not surrounded by an envelope. We don't have a nucleus. And here, because it's a bacterial cell, we can found a flagellium, which will assure and ensure the mobility of the cell. So here, another figures that describe the same thing. So here a question, a curious question. Why does size have to do with the cell? Why the prokaryotic cell are much smaller than the eukaryotic cell? The smaller surface area, it allows the nutrient to easily and to quickly reach the inner part of the cell. Eukaryotic cells lives always with other cells. Okay? Or in the, or in the majority of time, it's with other cells. These other cells will ensure the delivery of the nutrient. So eukaryotic cell does not have the same difficulty as a prokaryotic cell to digest, to take inside the nutrient, because the nutrients are uh, available at a better level. So the, eukary the prokaryotic cell, sorry, needs a smaller surface to allow nutrient to easily and quickly reach the inner part of the cell. Eukaryotic cells are larger, as we said, and cannot pass nutrient as quickly. They require specialized organelles, like what? Like this, is the, um, like uh, I can't find the name. Well, uh, like the lysosomes, like uh, I don't know, like the vesicles inside. So they need these organelles to carry out the metabolism, to carry out the sub-product of the nutrient. Well, that's what we call the metabolism. And to provide energy and to transport chemicals throughout the cells. As you saw, each function inside a eukaryotic cell has a specific things, has a specific organelle to do it. So I'm, I'm always pleased to show multiple uh, figures. I think it may uh, help you better to understand the course. So as you see here, it's a prokaryotic cell, as you as uh, always, uh, with a flagellum, uh, the nucleus, uh, the pronucleus is not the true nucleus, as we said. Inside, we found the DNA, the plasma membrane, etc. So the cellular component. What we also called what the organelles. Starting with the plasma membrane. Here in this course, we are gonna explain the main function. We are not gonna go inside the details. That's why maybe I will I will uh, escape uh, the next few uh, slides. In the next session, we are gonna distinguish and we are gonna explain uh, each function, not only the main function, but also um, the secondary functions. 
So we are gonna explain each organelle in detail. So each organelle we're gonna have a distinguished uh, chapter, a separate chapter. So going back now to the plasma membrane. So it act as a selective barrier, as we as we said. It's gonna select what it has a right to go inside the cell and what must stay outside the cell. It allow sufficient passage of nutrient and waste, so it's inside and outside this, the cell. So this is the main function of the plasma membrane. So we are gonna escape this few uh, slides. Um, the details of cytoplasm of the map, sorry, of the membrane will gonna be explained in a separate video. Going to the cytoplasm of the cell, so it's the ground of the cell. So here it's like in the pink like color. So it's everything outside the nucleus and inside the membrane. So it's a jelly-like substance enclosed by the cell membrane. It's provide the medium for chemical reaction to take place. So this is where the chemical reaction, the biochemistry of the cell is going to take place. It contains the organelles, which carry a specific jobs, as we already explained. It's found in all kind of cell, whatever it's prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell. The nucleus, what I call the genetic library of the cell. So the nucleus contains the most of the gene of eukaryotic cell, which is mean there is a few genes, even in eukaryotic cell, that we can found outside the nucleus, specifically in the mitochondria, things what we are going to explain in the chapter of mitochondria. So for now, the main function of the nucleus is to contain the mass of the gene of eukaryotic cell. Structure of the nucleus, what we can find inside the nucleus. We can find a chromatin, we can find the envelope, the nucleoplasm, the nucleus. What each of these terms means. The chromatin, it's an assembly, it's an association between the DNA and the protein. The nucleus, it's a chromatin and the ribosomal subunit. If you are not familiar with this uh, terms, don't worry, we are, gonna to we are going to explain these in detail during the cytogenetics part. I'm not going to dive into this information now. It's going to make the course a little bit more complex. It's going to orient you outside the aim of uh, this presentation. So for now, for those who know what's a chromatin, what's a stroposomal subunit, very good for you. If not, don't worry, we are going to explain it in details and further in, and further in the next uh, chapters. The nuclear envelope, from its name, it's the envelope uh, that surrounds the nucleus. It's a double membrane which contains a pores. The pores are important, why? To exchange the RNA, to get the RNA outside the nucleus. And whatever protein that needs to go inside the nucleus, it's going to pass through the pores. Finally, we have the nucleoplasm. It's a semi-fluid medium inside the nucleus. It's the cytoplasm of the nucleus. So in front of us here is the nuclear envelope. It's a dominant membrane also always surrounding, surrounding the nucleus. It also called the nuclear membrane and it contains a nuclear pore for material to enter and leave the nucleus. It's connected directly to through the ER. So what's ER mean? Let's dive directly to the part of endoplasmic reticulum. Well, the endoplasmic reticulum, the ER, is an endomembrane system regulates the protein traffic and perform metabolic function inside the cell. So in an easier way to say, it's an organ which found inside the cell, attached to uh, the envelope, the nucleus envelope, 
and it has a function to regulate the protein traffic. So inside of endoplasmic reticulum, we can find the ribosomes. So it's where it's traduction, uh, the translation um, happen. Okay. So also, if we found this information are not very clear, not very sufficient, don't worry, we are gonna explain these in detail during the chapter of endoplasmic reticula. Going back to the nucleus, it contains the DNA. The DNA associating it with the protein, it makes the chromatin, okay? And then it makes, as you all know, the chromosomes. What does the DNA do? It's called the hereditary material of the cell. It has the genes that make up the DNA molecule code for the different protein. So it's the library which has all the information needed to make protein, okay? Every protein must came from a gene and the genes are found inside the DNA. I think the most of this information we, we already know, I'm pretty sure. It's not the first year that I'm giving this course. Uh, it might be a little bit boring, I know, uh, but uh, the aim of this course to, uh, to familiarize uh, those who came from uh, not the biological background, who pass a mathematical uh, baccalaureate or economical one, uh, to be familiar with you, uh, the biological guys, knows already. So it might be easier for those who has a uh, biological baccalaureate, but uh, it could be a little bit challenging for the rest. But this is what the aim of this course, actually, one of the aims of this course, is to uh, homogenize uh, the level between you. So it could be boring, it could be easy for those with the bi biological baccalaureate, uh, life science, but it could be a little bit challenging and new for the others. Passing now to the ribosome. So those are the particles are responsible for the protein synthesis, okay? We all remember uh, during uh, maybe Brevet or the baccalaureate even, we have got uh, the ribosome and how the code of uh, amino acid is made, A, U, C, C, U, A, A, U, U, X, So with this ribosome, this ribosome is gonna read this code and make uh, the amino acid from the RNA. The ribosome are composed of a large subunit and a small subunit. So each ribosome has two subunits, the large one and the small one. The ribosome can be found alone in the cytoplasm and in a groups called polyribosomes or attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So I'm gonna uh, stop the recording here. Uh, in the next session, we are going to explain uh, the rest of the organelles, and maybe we are going to start to explain uh, to go into the first chapter of the first uh, organelles. It could be the mitochondria, or it could be other, it depends. Um, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. I think you all have my personal number. So even if you don't have the right, or you don't know if you can uh, ask questions, uh, of the group, maybe, uh, no sure even, you can contact me privately and ask me whatever you want. Uh, I cannot ensure you that I will respond in the same minute or the same hour, but for sure I'm gonna respond in the next 24 hours. Don't, don't, please don't hesitate to ask me whatever you want. So thank you very much. I'm waiting for your feedback uh, of the session. Um, and thank you again. And, uh, See you soon.